Hi guys, Grant from beyondbeaver.com where I teach you how to build websites ridiculously quick. Uh, in today's video tutorial, I'm going to talk about restricting user access in WordPress. What do I mean by this? Okay, just say you're doing websites for uh, clients or you have uh, different people that are going to be accessing your website. You're going to be the administrator because it's your website, but you want to restrict everyone else that's accessing that website, you know, so they can't break things, they can't install plugins, they can't change the theme accidentally, all that sort of stuff. So what I generally do for my clients, so for my web agency, is I'm an administrator user role, I set them up as an editor user role, and then I go in and I do two different things. Uh, I manage the capabilities for the editor user role, so I might add or remove them so that the dashboard changes and restricts the editor's user role, so my clients access to certain parts of the website. And then for every screen that they see, I might actually restrict what's on that screen. So there's two different things, restricting what areas of the website they can access, and then the second is restricting what's on those pages, okay? And to do that, we're gonna use two different plugins. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do this very, very quickly. And even better is once you've done it, you can export them and re-import them to different websites and you're gonna have the same settings throughout. So to show you guys today, this is a website that I've just finished for a client and it's an e-commerce one and it runs on uh, WooCommerce and it's using the Beaver Builder Page Builder, which is a great page builder. If you guys have never tried it, check it out. I'll put the link in the description below uh, to the demo. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it for laying out your content. So that's it now. So the client's happy with it. I'm gonna hand it over to her so she can start adding her content. But what I first need to do is I need to do those two things. I need to restrict what areas of the website they, that she can access, and then I need to restrict what's on those pages so she doesn't get confused and, and start clicking everywhere. Uh, for instance, clicking screen options and then hiding meta boxes that she forgets and then she can't find that certain thing. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the dashboard and we're gonna to go to plugins, add new, and we're gonna install user role editor. So type that into the search plugins box, user role editor, do a little search. And it's this one here with the two faces. So look at this, 153 four and a half star ratings, last updated four weeks ago and 300 thousand active installs. I mean, that that makes for a great plugin. And even better, I know they have a pro version, so they're making money somehow. It's a sustainable plugin. So let's go ahead and install that plugin by clicking the install button. And then we'll click activate plugin to activate user role editor. So second thing we need to do is we need to create the user for our client. So to do that, you just do it like any normal WordPress user under users, add new, Put in a username. So I'm just gonna use dummy details here, but um, I've already created her, so my client as a user. So I won't go through it, but I just wanna show you guys, when you're here for the role, you can select, these are all the registered user roles that are in your WordPress install. Uh, and for me, I use editor for my clients, that's one under admin. Because I wanna give my, my clients the ability to change WordPress as much as possible without breaking things, and the editor user role, which is one under administrator, seems to be a great balance between what they can do and also the restriction. So create the user, give them the editor user role and click add new user. Okay, so once you've created the user, what I do is I open up a new browser in incognito or private browsing, and then I log in as my client. So what that means is I'm logged in as an administrator on one side of the screen, administrator being me, and on the other side, I'm logged in as my customer, which has the editor user role. So by using incognito or private browsing, you can actually log in as two different users in the same browser. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'll do, I'll get up an incognito browser and I'll log in as my customer. So I'll just pause the video. Okay, so I've successfully logged in as my client. So on the left, we're logged in as an admin, which is me, the administrator, user role. And then on the right hand side, we're logged in as my client, which is the editor user role. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to first change her capabilities so we can sort of see a few more things on the menu here. Uh, it's a WooCommerce shop and her being the editor user role, she doesn't have the capabilities of the shop manager user role that comes with WooCommerce. And we know this because on the side here, she doesn't have access to the WooCommerce items that the admin has on the left hand side or the product, products menu item. So what I usually do is I compare the left, the admin, to the right editor user role that we're gonna be changing, and I sort of see what's missing. So yeah, I mean, the WooCommerce is missing. Uh, she has the forums, topics, and replies. That's all good for BB Press. 
uh, word fence and custom post type to UI is hidden, but I want I want that hidden because I don't want her deregistering a post type that I've used for her projects. Um, and yeah, so that looks like it's all good. So I just need to add the WooCommerce items over here so she can manage her shop and add products. Uh, and I also want to remove this item. So this is the templates. So this is uh, a post type that's registered by the Beaver Builder Page Builder plugin. I only want access to that because I have different ways that she can edit those uh, post types anyway. Uh, so I want to go ahead and hide that. So we're going to show the WooCommerce items and then we're going to hide the templates. Uh, I generally hide the links as well. And the rest looks good. So let's do that. So as we're logged in as an administrator over here, let's go ahead and under users, we'll go to user role editor. So this is a new menu item that was registered when we activated user role editor, the plugin. So first you select the user role you want to edit and then you assign the capabilities. So we want to edit the editor user role. So you select that drop down and the page will reload. Now that we've selected this editor user role, we see all the capabilities that are available in WordPress. And then the checks show us which capabilities that are available are allowed or assigned to this editor user role. So we can see an editor user role has the capability to upload files, but it doesn't have things like the ability to view WooCommerce reports. And that's why our, our um, customer over here, my client, she cannot see the WooCommerce reports because she doesn't have that capability to see it. So what I want to do is I want to go through here and anything that's related to the shop. So uh, for instance, view WooCommerce reports, uh, read shop webhook, read shop order, read shop coupon. I want to go through all these capabilities here and I want to allow, so I want to assign her the capability for all the shop capabilities. So again, WooCommerce, once activated, has registered all these new capabilities because it checks for these capabilities to dynamically uh, allow access to the plugin and show different things. And then we're going to want to go and assign these to our editor user role. So I'll just go ahead and I'll just check all these shop uh, capabilities. So I'll just pause the video. Okay, so I've just finished doing that. And if you go through, you can see I've checked all the shop ones. So uh, some important ones, uh, manage WooCommerce, that's a biggie. Uh, read shop orders. So all everything to do with shop, which you can definitely tell it has shop in the name or it has WooCommerce. All of those are checked. I want to double check that I have edited the right one. So edit a user role. Yes, that is correct. I want to click update and then want to, want to click yes to confirm. That's going to save these settings for the editor user role. And then if I go back to where I'm logged in as my client and I refresh the page, now that this client has access to edit the WooCommerce pages, and the capabilities, you can see the two new menu items are here. And she can now manage her shop. She can manage her shop now because I've assigned her editor user role the ability to manage the shop through allowing her access to the capabilities needed to do that. So now that we've shown the WooCommerce, we just need to do that last little thing and we need to remove the templates menu item. So to do that, uh, what I usually do is I'll go to here and I'll check if there's a capability that that plugin has registered to allow editing the templates. Now I've been through here, there actually isn't. If there is a menu item here that I can't remove by changing the capability, so maybe there's not a capability that affects the display of this, it's actually just inbuilt into the plugin. What I do is I use another plugin that I'm gonna install now, so plugins add new, and it's called add minimize. And again, this is free. So it's this first one, 200 active installs, Five star rating from 157 people, and it's uh, last updated two months ago. So that's again another great thing. I've been using this for about three years now. It's it's incredible. Let's install now. Just click the install now button, and then once that's finished loading, let's activate the plugin. Okay, and you can see Ad Minimize is activated, and we have this new menu item under settings for Ad Minimize. So let's click on that. Great, this is sort of the, the contents page. So if you click here, it will scroll down to that section on the page and these are all different um, sort of groups of settings that you can change using and minimize. So for instance, if I click on menu options, you can see dashboard, separator, posts, media. If we go up here, dashboard, separator, posts, 
media. So menu options is where you hide the different menu items. And each column is for a different user role. So we're editing the editor user role, which is here. And like I said, I wanna hide the templates menu item. So for the editor, let's go down and we're looking for templates on the right. So when you hover, you can see the row lights up. And there we go, templates. And this is the editor user role. So we wanna hide that. So let's check that. So whatever you check is hidden. So let's hide the templates. And then we'll click update options. And then when that page saves, refresh, keep an eye on this templates item here, and it's gone. So also we wanna hide this links item. So let's click back to the menu options, edit to user role, let's scroll down to links and we'll check that. So if you check one of these uh, red boxes, so see here the menu item links, it has the sub menu items underneath. So you can just hide sub menu items or you can click this parent here and it will hide everything. So let's click to hide everything under the links menu item and click update options. When that page saves, we're gonna refresh over here. Keep an eye on the links and it's gone. So you can see we're hiding things that our clients and our customers don't need to make their lives easier. They ask less questions, everyone's happy. And I'll just show you a couple of the other things that a minimize is good for. Um, so say you wanna, on the dashboard, you wanna hide this quick draft, okay? So you could go up to screen options and you could hide the quick draft. You know, less is more, they probably don't use quick draft, I've never used it. So back in Adminimize under dashboard options, if you click on that, you get all the meta boxes that are registered on the dashboard. So advanced responsive video and better, at a glance activity, Yoast, all these sort of things. So let's just say we wanna hide the quick draft. What we could do is we go into here, and I know it's no title because you can see the, the um, ID there is dashboard quick press. For the editor, let's just go and we'll click no title. We'll update the options. We'll come back to here and we'll refresh the page. And notice quick draft over here gets hidden. Also, WordPress news. Maybe you don't want your people knowing that, um, you know, there's been a flaw in uh, WordPress or something because then they ask questions, or these are linking to third-party websites which might compromise the information that you're supplying your customers because you wanna be the source of knowledge. So again, add minimize dashboard options, WordPress news, edit a user role, click to hide, update options, go back to here and we'll click refresh, and now it's hidden again. So again, you're trying to make WordPress as easy to use for your clients one, so they're not overwhelmed and they, you know, they build confidence in the system. They build confidence in using their website, which makes it more likely to be more successful and you get less support tickets. And just to show, at Minimize, we, hide, we hid those two boxes. If we go to screen options, they're actually removed from over here. So it's not just a, a little hack, like it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. And that's why I really, really like at Minimize uh, and use a role editor as well. And lastly, just, you know, you're handling the website, you're in charge of updating. You probably wanna hide this notice here, WordPress 4.6 is available. When I wasn't hiding this, I got emails and they're like, you know, oh, is my website up to date? Oh, should I click on that? I don't know if I should click on that. So what you're gonna to wanna to do to hide this is inspect element in your browser and you'll notice that this has the class update hyphen nag. So copy that. And then the cool thing about Adminimize is I do, I, you can put it anywhere, but under global options, you can give, you can hide specific things by ID or class. So here's the sort of nice name. So I'm just gonna say uh, hide update nag. So this is just your title for what you're doing. So here you wanna put the ID or class of the element you're gonna hide. So dot to denote a uh, class update hyphen nag because we knew it was a class and click update options. Save, click back on global options and you'll see here it's added our new option into the table. So now for the editor user role, if we click, we're gonna hide all things in our dashboard that have the class 
update hyphen nag and you can see the class just here. So let's click and then we'll click update option and then we'll go back here when that page saves and we're going to refresh and notice that this hides. So now whenever they get an update nag, because it's hidden, they'll never see it and you'll never have those annoying questions of should I update my site, should I click on this, should I click on that. And just that ability to hide things based on ID or class, you can customize the dashboard however you want. So I worked for an agency where we hid screen options because people would click on here and then hide really important things and Logitech is saying, oh, you guys have removed, uh, you've removed this thing and I can't add uh, product descriptions to my WooCommerce products and it's because they've unchecked it in the screen options. So for a lot of our clients, we would set them up. So we'd log in as them and set up the screen options and then we'd literally right click inspect element, get this screen options ID, which is here. So uh, ID equals screen hyphen options hyphen link hyphen wrap. And then we would put that in there into our um, global options with the ID. So ID hyphen screen options, I would copy that hide screen options. And so I would do that. So a hash to denote an ID, I'll click update options that would show down here and we would check that and save. And then this whole tab wouldn't show for them. But I've also noticed that um, adminimize has actually added that now by default. So you can see here. So a good way to check is when you are about to hide something, copy and paste the ID or the class name into adminimize and do a command or a control F to find that. And then it might come up. So see here, it's found that ID. So it's a built in uh, setting that you can adminimize using adminimize. And so we would check it for the editor and then that would hide it. And now that's just for a post. So write options post. So again, if we do a control F, it's there for page. So you could hide this on a per post, uh, post type being you could hide the screen options tab up here for posts, but show it for pages. Um, or you could just go up to the global options and add it and then hide it everywhere on every page. So guys, I've shown you exactly how you can restrict the user access in WordPress uh, for any of your needs. Uh, be it if you're having someone log into your website and you wanna stop them from uh, doing certain things, um, or you know if you're building websites for other people and you wanna limit to what they can change. And just to reemphasize that you wanna first use user role editor to add or remove capabilities because that can change the menu items and access to certain things. And then once you've got all the capabilities sorted out, then install and minimize and start hiding and removing menu items and stuff because you don't want to install and minimize first and hide things that could be hidden with a capability because then you're hiding it twice and it's just a bit redundant. So use a role editor to add or remove capabilities and minimize to clean up the pages that your customer can see. That's it for today's tutorial. Uh, in the comments box below on YouTube, don't forget to read all the different links that I put in there. They're very helpful. Uh, and subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. You join our mailing list on beyondbeaver.com so you can start building better websites ridiculously fast. Until our next video, stay safe and keep learning.